He's a big guy upstairs because he's beating his old lady up, and I go to jail. A distraught man who was depressed and allegedly had poured gasoline around his body. He's trying to start his truck with a quarter. I see your hands! I see your hands! The vehicle uh, proceeded to uh, speed away from us at a uh, high rate of speed. Good recovery. We've got a gun. You can't write a letter? No. You can't write to her, you can't phone her, you can't talk to her directly. If you guys are going to start fooling around with guns, you're going to get hurt, you're going to get shot. You have to do a whole lot better than that if you think that I'm going to believe that this is a, the handgun that you were playing with. Is this a certain protection? Yeah. This program contains actual police footage. No reporters, no recreations. Two of our plainclothes officers have uh, have three, possibly three males in a residence here uh, who were sighted earlier uh, with a handgun, possibly a chrome-plated handgun. I guess earlier tonight, one male got into a confrontation with uh, a group of other males. He pulled a, what looked like a chrome-plated semi-automatic 9mm handgun from his gun belt and started threatening to kill him. So we're going to uh, assist them with uh, an entry into the uh, house and see if we can recover the gun and uh, the suspect responsible. Pull it! Right down! Take it out! You'll go in front! You'll go in front! You'll go in front! You'll go in front! Shut your mouth, okay? Shut your mouth. Put your hands together. Put your hands around behind your back. Right in front of you. Down on the ground. I see your hands. I see your hands. Okay. I haven't cleared that door. Let's just keep your hands out, all right? Okay, put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back and stay on the yeah. ground. What did I do? I just got here. What just happened here was uh, we were preparing to do the takedown. We were at the south side of the apartment block. People started leaving the residence, and then a couple people spotted us, ran back into the residence. Right now you're under investigation for possession of a restricted weapon. No, I have nothing. Okay. I just want to ask him, why do I have to? I okay. just came here like five minutes. All right, I'm telling you that we got some information. I, walking out the back and I want to. I want to know where the gun is. Gun. I want to know where the gun is. You guys. I, somebody here would not be carrying a gun unless they're flashing. You can check me, man. I swear. I'm not saying it's you, but I want to know. You can ask where every one of these other people. I just got here, man. I swear. I'm not lying. Yeah. Damn. 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 Listen. Do you remember me? Do you remember me? I don't need a warrant, okay? All right? All right? And I don't need any lip from you. I don't need a warrant. I don't need any lip from you. Listen, listen, okay? This isn't a game anymore, okay? I don't care if it's a cap gun or a real gun. Listen, Shane, yes, I can, okay? All I want to know is where it is, okay? Because we're not fooling around anymore. You guys are going to start fooling around with guns, you're going to get hurt, you're going to get shot, and it might be me or it might be somebody else. Okay, I know that's serious, isn't it? You can text your Shane like me with a gun. Shane, well, we know you. You know you have a gun or a cap gun or whatever. I just want to see what it is. Well, okay. Let me tell you Shut up. Let's go Shh. up there. Let's let's go up Shh. here and look. Don't, don't move there. around so much. I'm trying not to. Oh, true. Okay. Will you uh, you uh, walk with us here and you show us? Well, there's a reason that you're sort of bound up like this, guys. I don't know why you got a half 
Well, we're investigating a serious incident, number one. Well, what happened? Someone gets shot. Somebody pointed a gun at somebody. Where was this? We were pulling around with a little toy gun, like we always do. Where? Here. Well, I'm not well, you're changing your story, Shane, so give me straight goods. Where was, where were you playing with the gun? Like, a couple like, days ago? Like, yesterday, we were up here just pulling around. Here. Like tonight. I saw you get out of the car, okay? What car? The gray car. The four-door. I saw her drop you off. Balder all Yeah, my friend's right. boyfriend. Where's the gun? What gun? The one this officer's asking you about. That's it. Captain. Who's in there? Who's in there? They were with the police. Show them. Okay, show, them that that little gun? show them. Yeah, I'll take this down. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Are you by yourself? Go ahead. No, is anybody else in the house? Who's here? This that Shane was playing with? No, it's been here all night. Okay, it's been here all night. Has Shane, you know Shane, what I'm talking about? Okay, Shane, you have another gun in the seat. Shane, right now, you're also being charged with obstruction. You understand that? that? Do you know what that means? You're lying to the police and you're leading us around in a little game here, showing us where this gun is. That's not the gun you had tonight, okay? It's been there all night. Okay, it wasn't a little plastic gun. I want to know where the gun is that you are dealing with tonight. Well, I don't got no other gun. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Were you down along Stride Avenue tonight? Stride Avenue? Yeah, down by the Edmund Sky Train. We were moving all day, like all day. I asked my sister. Moving where? Like, we're moving to McPherson and, uh, you Short honestly believe, want us to believe that this is the gun that you had? I gotta do better than that. Well, you have to do a whole lot better than that if you think that I'm gonna believe that this is the, the handgun that you were playing with today. Well, I don't know what you can, like, holy. We don't know what. Smile all you, you want. Think, you think I'm gonna... This look, is the gun that you said you were I playing know, with? I know, look. You think that this is the gun? You think I'm gonna believe that this is the gun that was being pointed at people? You don't think they're gonna know this is a toy gun? Yeah, obviously. You're going to have to do a lot better than that. Okay, this is not the gun that we're talking about here, and you know that. You're going to have to come through a lot better than this to make any of us believe you. So are you ready to try again? Well, I was. I was playing with that gun. Like I asked day. the man here who's been here for a couple hours, and you did not show up with his door to return no gun. Now, are you going to tell us the truth? Truth about what? Where the other one is. The one we're other talking what? about, not this. Gun. Where is it, Shane? Okay? It, it, this isn't uh, fun and games time anymore here, okay? Well, you can check all the stuff we've moved, everything. Like, we never moved nothing. I want to know where this handgun is. I want to get this handgun off the street, so I want to know where it is. Okay? It's not funny. It's not funny at all. This is serious. Just show us where it is, Shane. You know, we've been good to you. You know we treat you fairly. So, Always uh, treat uh, you We fairly. just want it back. We're asking you where it is. Show oh, us where it is. It's a hot pallet then, okay? All right. Okay. That's where fine, is it? but where is it, though? Is it the, at the house? Yeah. Where is it? In the car? Oh, yeah, I think it's, it is at the house. Okay, whereabouts at the house? In my closet. All right. Let's Where's your closet? Yeah. Pretty oh. sure. I don't know. Where's your closet? Which room is it? The one to the right. Oh. The one to the left. 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 Okay. That's better. It's only. It's only. Like, okay. I don't care. It, it's better. If it's a pellet gun, great. It's a pellet but gun. I don't want to get It's better. It's better that's a. Man. Well, that's what's going to happen. And it's better that it's a pellet gun than a real gun, right? It's going to get seen. Sure, it'll get seized. If you're carrying around in your pants like a real gun, no, I just you're gonna get hurt. My friends, it's just a pellet gun. The parties involved have been evicted from this residence, and as of midnight tonight, uh, they were no longer allowed to be in that residence.
Um, the weapon was never discovered in, in the residence. Uh, there's some indication from one of the suspects that uh, the, the actual party involved uh, left the residence about 45 minutes ago. Uh, he says that the weapon is actually a pellet gun. However, our witnesses uh, say it had a slide action very similar to a semi-automatic. Um, a suspect name has been provided and uh, Constable Macbeth and Constable Limburn are going to follow it up. They're going to do a photo lineup and see if we can identify this guy and uh, charge him with threatening. To serve and protect, we'll be right back. This guy here is currently in a dispute with his common law um, over uh, property and, and settlements and so on. They have one daughter who's with the common law um, wife and she's not in the lower mainland here right now. He is supposed to be getting visitation rights with tomorrow, okay? Um, and they will arrive tomorrow by BC Ferry at about 7 o'clock. Um, last, last Sunday he had a visitation uh, with and he was supposed to turn over to a third person and that third person was supposed to take to him for the visitation. He chose to show up at the ferry terminal and have direct contact with uh, his common law at the ferry terminal, which was against the, the recognizance which he was released on on the 22nd. He again breached it later on in the day when uh, the common law arrived to pick up again. and. Um, he again tried to talk to her. It ended with uh, the common law grabbing out of his arms and running onto the ferry terminal to avoid any further contact. As they were on the ferry on the way home, um, the common law looked into the, the knapsack of, of the daughter, and here was a letter from him, okay, which again, he was not supposed to have any direct or indirect contact. So he's breached, breached his recognizance, uh, his 810 order, Three times, and he's arrestable uh, on a 524, a section 524 of the criminal code for breach of recognizance, and uh, that's what we're going to go after him for. So he's got potential for being violent. When we've got him arrested and handcuffed, we'll escort him to your car and put him in it, and you just zip him down to the office, okay? Because uh, it could be kind of ugly, and if you want to cover me at the front, and, and you as well. Okay, and that any should. We don't know that he has any weapons in the house at all. I've received a complaint that you breached your recognizance. Okay, the one that you were released on. Well, okay. which, which is this? The one that you were released on, not to have any contact with. I've had no contact with whatsoever. Okay. That's not what I've heard. Who, who heard? Anyway, I'm I placing you under arrest for breach of recognizance. Okay. I'm picking up my daughter tomorrow at seven o'clock in the morning. Okay, but you're not going to without getting released from custody again. I got a piece of paper. Yeah. Right? Okay. Same. You're under arrest for breach of recognizance, okay? You... Listen, hold on, wait a second. Let me finish this, okay? Let me go through these rights, okay? Let me go through these rights. You may call a lawyer, any, and you may call any lawyer you wish. You guys, a legal aid duty lawyer is available to provide the legal, aid, uh, legal advice to you without charge and can explain the legal plan to you. Uh, if you wish to contact a legal aid duty lawyer, I can provide you with the telephone numbers. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. You are not obliged to say anything. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah. Okay. I've only contacted her lawyer. Mm -hmm. Well, well, she said I, that I you met her at the ferry yet last weekend. What? She said that you met her at the ferry last weekend, and she showed me a letter that she said you wrote to her. 
Yeah, which I is, wrote a letter to her. Yeah, which is indirect communication. You can't do that. I can't write a letter? No. Nope. Nope. You can't write to her, you can't phone her, you can't talk to her directly. I didn't know that meant writing a letter. No, nope, that's what it does. So. I mean, can you guys, why couldn't you just come up here and tell me not to write a letter to her? Can't do that. It's a, it's, you've got to comply with the regulations that they set down for you. I mean, come on. I mean, am I a criminal for writing a letter? Put your shoes on. i got no choice. I know you do. You're doing your job. I realize yeah. that, but I'm telling you guys, yeah. this, this is unbelievable. We uh, affected the rest, uh, gave the fellow his legal rights, and uh, he couldn't believe he was being arrested, and we caught him off guard, and therefore uh, it went right quite smoothly. Oh, man, what can I say? Hey, what, sir? Pardon? What did I do? You're going around corners at warp speed, right? Was, and my partner and I were trying to catch up with you. Okay, we eventually got a police car involved there, and he ended up uh, pulling you over. All right. And I'm not. Uh, well. I was. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, I stopped and stuff. Essentially, we're coming out of uh, Lynn Valley uh, Mall, and uh, we're coming back down 15th back, just heading back towards the office. My partner and I, uh, I noticed a vehicle that was uh, coming up alongside me it was uh, a red minivan which at this time of night in north vancouver is a potential potentially good vehicle for a stolen vehicle it had no no rear license plate on it i pointed it out to my partner and the vehicle uh, proceeded to uh, speed away from us at a uh, high, high high rate of speed we uh, followed him as he continued to sort of zigzag in and around the uh, detachment area which was fortunate for us because we were starting to lose our breath uh, as my partner and I are on the bike section. Uh, fortunately, we were close enough to the office that a couple of marked units assisted and uh, proceeded to uh, pull the vehicle over. So the, the, uh, the driver had uh, faint smell of liquor on his breath. Now we did give him an approved screening device, a roadside test, which he did, uh, which he did pass, but uh, something obviously made him nervous enough that uh, he decided he was going to try and get away from the police. So subsequent to that, we, we proceeded to give him two tickets, uh, both failing to stop for peace officers, one of which was uh, our pursuit, and the secondary of which was he failed to stop for actually a mark unit um, right here where we stopped him. That's about it. So we essentially released him and, uh, and sent him on his way. Hey, check him out. Nice and soft. That's for you. You can have that. <laughs> OK? That's a good boy. One of the guys wanted some help. He was bleeding. Yeah, yeah. Was, how are you doing? I guess uh, the practice is that one, one fellow here. I guess he took a tumbler in the face. Exactly one sip of beer. Okay. And one, okay, now this guy threw a tumbler at me from right down the hall. This this Len guy? That, I mean, how is he? He's not here now. This is four <laughs> bloody hours that he's been here. Remember, I wanted to believe. She, she is, her? is on one side. Um, she is, is her? totally behind is his behavior, totally mm -hmm. behind everything he's done. This was a result of not a punch or a fight. This was a Air tumbler flying approximately all the way down the hallway. A tumbler about that size. The gentleman lives in 401. He drinks 66 ounces of vodka every day. He's done this for 23 years. In the middle of the thing, I get him. 
Was I didn't pull the fire alarm? Why did you pull the fire alarm? I didn't pull the fire alarm. I was being grabbed, shoved oh. after the tumbler hit me. I couldn't see. So I was blinded. Business? What's that? This one. Pull, we got to yeah. reset this. We reset this pull station. We'll go down and set the rest of the alarm. So I guess he went down these stairs. That's what I figured. Oh, this fellow saying he pulled this. So he, got, yeah, he was standing right here. I guess he's the one he got hit. He, okay, he they, we'll have ball. to tell the manager he's got to get a break bar in there. So. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we were here earlier this evening uh, responding to a complaint by the boyfriend who we just dealt with. Uh, <clears throat> he uh, called both ourselves and Amulus, uh, stating that his girlfriend had OD'd on cocaine. Uh, when we arrived, she refused uh, ambulance treatment, and accordingly we left. And I guess he got into a dispute with his neighbor, um, stating that uh, his neighbor was supplying cocaine to his girlfriend. <clears throat> and I guess an altercation ensued, and uh, buddy got popped. So we'll go down and talk to the suspect right now. Can you come to the door, please? Thank you. Retain and instruct counsel without delay. You can call any lawyer you want. I have none. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna do that. A legal aid duty lawyer is available to provide legal advice to you without charge, and he can explain the legal aid plan to you. Lock the door. Sir, sir, sir protect. Good God. No way. Can't be. Okay, come on, man. Okay, you bet you, buddy. Let's go. Remember, we're not putting cuffs on you here because we're nice guys. Don't take advantage of that fact, okay? Big guy upstairs. Uh, is this a certain tech? Really? I'd be a big guy upstairs because he's beating his old lady up, and I go to jail. Isn't this something? Is that not something? You guys probably see this every damn day. Mr. when we get in the elevator, yes. okay, you're going to stand in the far back corner right. and you're going to face the corner, okay? You're right. not going to face towards the elevator, you're going to face into the corner. I will do that. And when we get to the bottom, we're going to walk you out to the police car and you push you in the back seat, okay? You betcha. All right. Understood. If there's anybody in the elevator, we will not get in. Okay, and we will Carry on. Don't touch it. So what's going to happen here now? I guess I go down for assault for beating up a six foot six guy. That's what we told you. Who's beating up his girlfriend? That remains to be seen, Mr. Right now we don't have a complaint of assault, assault on the female. Female is scared to death. She's terrified. Just hang on a second. Yeah. Okay, like I said, in the corner, face the corner. There you go, face the corner. You don't have nothing where I'm going to Okay, just gonna make sure that. I'd like to have my hamburger at all. <laughs> Starving. That's your ID and your wallet there? Yes, it sure is. Would you like to see it? No, that's fine. Oh, this way right here. You bet you. My side beat up the big guy. Oh, I don't want to be in a small You're going to be on TV, you said. Okay, goodbye. Go this way. Gary, I'm uh, being uh, called out. Let's go. Okay. Help okay, Donna. Man. Help Donna. Gary, help Donna. Let's go. I'm going to see the girlfriend. 
You don't have to smoke in the back of the police car. You don't have to do anything, okay? There's a victim up in the upstairs department. Uh, He's going to be taking the uh, Burnaby General, where he uh, will be getting uh, some stitches underneath the nose and possibly has a broken nose at this point. And apparently, the victim was attempting to uh, throw out the, uh, the suspect here and uh, was threatening the suspect and pushing him out the door when the suspect retaliated and the fight's on. And that's uh, basically what happened here. This appears to be a consensual fight. We're at the scene of... Uh a call where we were dispatched to a distraught man who was depressed and allegedly had poured gasoline around his body. He's currently locked in a, uh, an office area of a of a outbuilding behind his residence. Um, his wife and uh, another co-worker of his have been trying to negotiate with him for approximately two hours and they've had no success. They then called the police and had us respond. I've had a Burnaby Fire Department and the uh, emergency health services, the ambulance, attend the scene as a precautionary measure. And we have now been negotiating with him for approximately a half an hour. These verbal negotiations are somewhat one-sided and we're not really achieving much success with them. So we're going to have to probably come to some sort of uh, plan to expedite uh, the negotiations and safely take this uh, person uh, into custody and get him off to the hospital where he needs to be assessed by a physician. Well, the matter now is, has been successfully uh, concluded. We uh, have the male in custody. What we uh, had planned was we had uh, two uniform members uh, initially go in to the uh, locked door after we uh, were successful in opening the door. And we also had the Burnaby Fire Department uh, in attendance immediately behind our uniform members, and they were uh, standing by with a one and a half inch fire hose. Upon entering the office, our members uh, confronted the, uh, the distraught male and he was in the process of uh, smoking a cigarette. He had lit the cigarette. The prudent choice uh, to extinguish the cigarette was, uh, was made and the method of choice of putting the cigarette out was with the fire department and that was to safely protect our members and, and of course the distraught male. He's uh, been taken into custody now. He's, uh, he, there was no struggle. It was done very quietly and he's now on route back to the hospital so he can be assessed and receive the proper treatment that he requires. To serve and protect, we'll be right back. We're out beside the uh, Dell Hotel and we found somebody that uh, couldn't make it home. Come on, open up. Police, come on, open up. Don't be doing that, open up the window. Come on, open the door. Open up the door. Open up the door now. Open up the door. <laughs> Where's your alarm coming from there, Lisa? Is it uh, the roof or the front door or where? <laughs> He's trying to start his truck uh, with a quarter. Come on, open up. Come on, op open up now. Open up the door. Come on out of the car. Just leave it in gear and get out. Okay, open up your door right now. Open your door right now. Just leave the ignition alone and open your door. 
Do you understand me? Yeah. Open your door. on out right now out you're under arrest for being drunk in a public place okay do you understand really yes now i want you to open that door and step out that side oh. otherwise i'm going to take you out through here okay fine but i mean why you're intoxicated and you're trying to drive away in your truck no just come on out Okay, were you in the bar drinking tonight? Where'd you come from? What have you got in here? Pills? Okay, hands out of your pockets. Just turn around. Okay, you're under arrest for being drunk in a public place. Okay, you understand you have the right to retain and instruct counsel without delay. It means you can contact a lawyer, contact legal aid. Legal aid duty lawyer will explain the legal aid system to you for free and give you free legal advice. Do you understand all that? Okay. Where do you live, sir? Nothing looks disturbed on the inside. I don't know. Take care of that one. Okay, where's all the blood coming from? Okay, you got blood on your lips and you got blood on that bag that was in your pocket. Were you in a fight? You fall down and hurt yourself? Are you okay? Oh, yes. Yes, you're okay or yes, you fell down and hurt yourself? I'm okay. Okay. You got keys for the truck? Yes, you do. I hope so. Okay, where's home for you? Uh, right here. Right here, right where? Are you staying in the hotel? No. Where's home? What's your home address? Right here. Whose pills are these? My, uh, old ladies. Why have you got your wife's pills on you? Yes. Okay. Do you have something for me? Sure. I'm back. Okay. What's up here? More pills? Yes. Yeah. Right. Subscribing to you. Walking drugstore here. My girlfriend. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't fall over on me. Okay. Let's go have a seat in my car, okay? No, walk this way. Come on. Okay. Watch your head. Watch your head. Watch your legs. Yeah, he was trying to start his truck with a, uh, a loony. And I was banging on the window, almost popped the window, and unfortunately the other side was uh, was open. Beer cans, everything else. It is no longer lockable up. I can't secure it. Do you uh, want me to have it towed? <clears throat> no, it's okay. Uh, it's okay right where it is? Uh, the, uh... So I'll just lock the doors and leave it as is? Yeah, my lawyer will... Uh... Your lawyer will look after it in the morning? Yeah. That's yeah. good. Someone's just witnessed um, a hit and run in Vancouver where uh, a truck hit two cars, kept on going. <laughs> Somebody is following it on a cellular phone and this giving directions. So and we're going to try to intercept the uh, the truck as long as we can keep this person on the cellular. Oh, we should be able to get them. They were in the center lane of Kingsway. Mm -hmm. It looked like a, a rear-ender. You know, people got out of their car. 
I didn't see the actual accident happen, but I went right around them. Mm -hmm. I, I recognized the vehicle because the, the back tail light on the driver's side is, is suspended. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I drove by because I didn't see anything. I don't mind being a witness if I saw anything, but I didn't see anything. And then coming along uh, later on to Kingsway by Kingsway and Joyce, he was right behind me, like, right behind me. So I actually let him by. And uh, then I saw him when he passed me, there was a tail light hanging. Um, and he was driving extremely fast. So I called 911. I'm wondering if someone had reported a hit and run. She didn't really know. And then when he turned the corner from Kingsway to go southbound on Boundary, mm -hmm. he nicked a parked car. I saw that. So it was two parked cars he hit? I, I, I saw the one for sure, because okay. the car jolted. Okay. okay. Came along Boundary, he was doing a speed limit. I think by that time he might have known I was following him. Um, turned down Rumble. And what he would do, he would stop and uh, just stop like where that car is parked. Mm -hmm. This was the light, wait till the light changed, late amber even red, and then run the light. And I would stay behind him and the light green. And he would get caught behind traffic and I'd get caught up to him again. He stopped right there, mm -hmm. and I know he stopped, so I stopped. Up the you know, street? In the middle of the street, yep. just half a block up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, he got out of his car and he go, I heard him say something like, what the f do you want, buddy? He's standing in the middle of the street. And then he started running towards my car. I just turned the car around, went down Royal Oak, went up Clinton, and I just parked okay. on McPherson and just waited for you guys. I didn't know if he was still there or not. Okay. At one point, we were driving along Kingsway. We were going 50, 60, maybe 65, speed of traffic. He was so close that I couldn't even see. I mean, I could just see the headlights. I thought he was parked in my car. So I actually pulled into uh, under the curb lane and let him by because I just thought he was in awful rush. So I let him by. Okay. And when I went in behind him, I noticed his tail light was dangling, and that was the car involved in the rear end or okay. the rear ender. How many people did you see in the truck? This, just him. Just him. Okay. When, when I went by them on Kingsway, he was actually out of his truck. It was actually stopped. There was a, a white Pinto or a white Chevette. Okay, and that's the vehicle he hit. I think so. I, again, I didn't okay. see anything. They were both stopped. So he stopped and he got out. Yes. That's were, what it looked like. They were both. Out. There okay. was no one in. The, no one in at that time. Okay. What was there? Anybody else out on the street from the Pinto? Um, there, there was another car behind him. Don't know what the car was like. Okay. That, was, that had it also stopped. Okay. And we were just going around them. And then the second vehicle he hit. Um, when I I was on the phone with 911. Yep. And uh, he. Uh, he was coming along Boundary. He was mm -hmm. going eastbound into Burnaby. Looks like he was going to go straight along Kingsway. Uh, at the very last minute, he turned uh, southbound. Made a right, made a right turn. Made a right hand turn. Onto Boundary. Onto Boundary, okay. and, he, and there's a car parked there, or it's like a, a minivan or a caravan, I think, okay. that was parked there. And I saw that jolt, so I knew he hit it. Traffic is just wishing that if you could call Vancouver and CD to let them know if they get um, a report of a, a hit and run around Kingsway and Victoria and Kingsway and Boundary that uh, we have a possible suspect vehicle and suspect in custody. I believe the vehicle that he would have struck around Kingsway and Victoria was a small white vehicle, possibly a Pinto, and then Kingsway and Boundary was a parked vehicle, possibly a minivan. He noticed the taillight hanging off the back of the truck. Okay. okay. So he keeps on going, he doesn't stop for the accident, doesn't look that serious. Just a little bit down the road, all of a sudden this guy passes him, and he's like, geez, that's unusual that he was able to clear an accident that soon. Hit and run. So then he called 911 to see if any hit and run had been reported. And the operator didn't know at that time, so he kept following the truck. He makes a right turn at Kingsway and Boundary, and he hit a car there. And he okay. witnessed that one. Okay. Okay. So and it was. Possibly two accidents. Yeah, then. but on the Vancouver side. And it was, a, the, it was a minivan, and it was stationary. And then he, so he kept on following him. Once this guy realized he was being followed, what he'd do, he's, this, this gentleman says was, he would stop. When he was approaching a green light, he would stop. And that, as soon as the light would change to an amber, boom, he'd boot, and he'd blow the amber, the red, trying to get rid of him. And then finally, he pulled over here, and he got out. He said, buddy, what are you doing following me? Da, 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 da. Can then, he ID him from yeah, there? He, yeah, he was only one driver. He said okay. only one person He's in the vehicle. He's already fixed his taillights, because he's put it back on. Mm -hmm. He's made it sit where it's supposed to be. So I think I'm going to take him in for impaired. I've got this guy's particulars. Because we can prove he's the driver now. Yeah. And that'll give at least Vancouver a chance to go to these two accidents and yeah. connect with us. Through the help of the citizen, back another back one solved. We have uh, several cut-up car parts that have been thrown off the bridge here into the Serpentine River. And uh, this uh, people throw it into the river to avoid prosecution. 
So we're called in with the dive team to recover those parts and any other stolen property that may have been uh, thrown into the river. We've uh, sounded the river across here using a rope and a weight and the uh, depth where we're going to be diving on this side is uh, five to six feet. And the visibility from our experience in this river ranges from a foot to uh, two to three inches. And the original call came in when uh, local fishermen contacted Environment Canada and were uh, complaining about a small oil slick forming from some of the engine parts that they've uh, dropped into the river. What we can do is uh, start with this area here, we'll uh, continue further out and uh, see what we come across. As you identify individual pieces, what we'll do is we've got a wrecker up here that's uh, on site. Uh, we'll do the hookup and we'll drag this stuff right out of the water and uh, bring it up uh, straight up out of the water and onto the back of the bridge. Okay. Is there? I just want to check this bird. Okay, it looks like uh, we've got something here. He's giving me uh, he's giving me two pulls on his rope, which means he wants uh, he wants me to let out a little line. What have you got? We've got a motorcycle engine right here. A motorcycle engine? Okay. Just a little too heavy for me to lift. All right, have you, uh, can you chain it up? Can you chain it up, Bruce? What's that? Can you chain it up? Yes. All right. The motorcycle engine has probably been sitting on the bottom for some time now, and uh, it's relatively stable. The diver's down there, and he's moving the engine around, which is creating this oil slick that you see on the top of the water. Uh, the simple movement of the engine alone would cause some of the oil to, to probably escape from the crank. Okay, are you hooked? Okay, we now have uh, it hooked and we're gonna simply bring it up over the edge. He's got, uh, he's got the bicycle and uh, transmission housing. It's, uh, you can obviously tell the type of visibility that he's got down there. He thought he had a motorcycle engine and as it turns out, it's a, it's a transmission housing from a vehicle. This area is pretty secluded at night. Uh, there's only a few houses in the area. It makes it tr a tremendous uh, dumping ground for people to come in and dump stolen vehicles and uh, bicycles and motorcycle parts. Well, five foot by two feet by a foot. One frame or part of a frame, car frame. Car frame? If this diver out here for some reason gets uh, caught or tangled, uh, as you can see that there's a, a lot of room for entanglement out there. This fellow's job is to go in and uh, save him. We try and keep him uh, dry and comfortable um, because he is basically the lifeline for this, uh, for this other diver out here. So it's not a, what is it? Yeah. Looks like a gun case. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. All right, good, good recovery. We got, uh, we've got a gun, a gun and a gun case. It could uh, it could be stolen from a uh, B and E, or it could have been used in uh, in an armed robbery. These fellows here from Coastline here are going to load up all the uh, the treasures that we've managed to recover from the river's bottom. Uh, we've recovered two motorcycle frames, 
parts of a Toyota truck, including the box and uh, frame fenders. We've uh, got uh, some motorcycle engines accompanied by some stolen bikes. And a lot of this stuff has already been identified as being stolen. So pretty much a worthwhile uh, day operation for us, um, which included those two guns, of course, that we got earlier on. We were moving all day, like all day. I asked my sister. Moving where? Like we're moving to McPherson and uh, you Short honestly, Street. You want us to believe that this is the gun that you had? I got to do better than that. Well, you have to do a whole lot better than that if you think that I'm going to believe that this is the, the handgun that you were playing with today. I beat a big guy upstairs because he's beating his old lady up. And I go to jail. Yeah, he was trying to start his truck with a, uh, a loony. And I was banging on the window, almost popped the window, and then fortunately the other side was uh, was open. He was in the process of uh, smoking a cigarette. He had lit the cigarette. The prudent choice uh, to extinguish the cigarette was uh, was made, and the method of choice of putting the cigarette out was with the fire department.